This video is brought to you by Athletic Greens. I have bad news. At some point recently, or maybe this very moment, some of your friends are hanging out without you. They're laughing, sharing snacks, and creating memories that will turn into long-running inside jokes that you will be forever excluded from. It happens to all of us. Once, my two best friends got scuba certified without me. But what if there is a simple solution to this universal problem? All you'd have to do is be an awkward but super smart high school student named Peter Parker who happens to get bitten by a radioactive spider which gives him spider powers, like sensing when things are about to happen and being able to crawl and jump from building to building to get places super fast. Basically, if you were Spider-Man, you'd always be able to sense if your friends were hanging out without you, and you'd be able to get there super fast to make them unbelievably uncomfortable about it, which is the goal, right? Science has done so many unthinkable things in our lifetime, so why no superpowers yet? And we're not asking to be gods from Asgard here. We simply think it's high time that science has figured out how to create the right type of radioactive spider that can give us a teeny little nibble and turn us into a spider person. Is that really too much to ask? So on This Science is Hard, we'll be asking, why can't we have Spidey Sense yet? But before we get into it, I wanna tell you about this video's sponsor. AG1 by Athletic Greens. It may not surprise you that I spend a lot of my time watching movies and ruining my eyesight over philosophy books, which is why AG1 by Athletic Greens is such a clutch way to help me benefit my health, especially on days when I don't have the energy to hit the gym or make a gigantic salad. AG1 by Athletic Greens is an all-in-one greens powder with 75 whole food sourced ingredients, including superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens, vitamins, and minerals. This this blend helps me meet my nutritional needs and it supports my gut health, energy, and focus too. And Athletic Greens is offering a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs to Wisecrack viewers with their first purchase. It's such a relief to know that my nutrition is taken care of every time I shake up a bottle of AG1 by Athletic Greens. First of all, it couldn't be easier to prepare. All I need is one scoop of powder and eight ounces of water, which is so much easier than making a smoothie or a shake. You just put it in, shake it up, easy to drink. And honestly, it tastes really good, better than most green juices you'd buy at the store. And it replaces all the bulky bottles of supplements that took up valuable real estate in my cabinets. There's so much packed into every scoop that it almost blows my mind. Those 75 ingredients I mentioned before also include dairy-free probiotics, adaptogens, antioxidants, and digestive enzymes. Don't don't forget the two complexes in there too. There's the superfood complex, which can help counteract free radicals, and the mushroom complex, which can help support your immune system. And it's all free of gluten, eggs, nuts, added sugars, GMOs, preservatives, bad vibes, and more. So go to athleticgreens.com slash wisecrack now to get a year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. See for yourself how AG1 by Athletic Greens can provide your body with everything it needs for optimal performance every day. And now, back to the show. To begin, and to keep it simple, we're going to focus on one of the key biological aspects of the Peter Parker experience, the tiny spider hairs all over his body, which allow him to climb walls and which presumably contribute to his spidey sense. So let's start with the first big assumption made by the Spider-Man canon. Namely, that a radioactive spider bite is able to alter the DNA of a human. While it's true that radiation does cause mutations in our DNA, that doesn't mean that it magically creates superpowers in humans, so don't start rubbing up against the microwave hoping for radioactive powers. That's because radiation isn't a thumb drive that inputs new information into your DNA. It's a sledgehammer that smashes it up. After the smashing process, cells respond in a couple of ways, by recognizing the DNA damage and then stopping the cell from dividing. In some cases, cells are great at DIY projects and they fix the damage on their own. Voila, no mutation, continue on your merry way. In others, cells try to fix the damage. But like a stone 24-year-old constructing an Ikea desk, it doesn't quite come together correctly. In this case, you might have a silent mutation that has no real negative effect. In miraculous cases, you could have a beneficial mutation, which while not giving you superpowers, might make some protein work a little better. But most likely, the cell is going to die, or you're going to get cancer. Which, on the bright side, maybe if you had a serious illness, your friends would probably feel bad and invite you to hang out with them. 
But long story short, your cells don't love mutations. Thus, radioactivity alone isn't going to magically transport you into the Spider-Verse. So don't turn off Netflix just yet. So if radioactive mutations aren't an option, are you stuck always scanning your friends' Venmo accounts and piecing together all the fun things they did without you based on spending patterns? Not necessarily. Because it might be possible that the spider bite, rather than being radioactive, could inject DNA into your system that could help you get the spider hairs you so desire, as DNA would contain the instructions needed to make these proteins. DNA is a charged molecule, and cell membranes are built precisely to keep huge charged molecules the hell out. You know, like the separate group chat you're convinced your friends made to exclude you. So the new superpowered spider hair DNA would still need a way to bust through and get into the cell. There are a couple of options here, but the most plausible would be for the spider to inject Peter, or in this case, you, with a vector. This is a structure or molecule that carries a DNA sequence into a cell so that the DNA can then give the cell some instructions. And a vector that could very well live inside a spider would be society's biggest trend you'd rather not talk about, a virus. Now, viruses, believe it or not, solve both of the problems created by radioactivity. They can get specific genetic instructions into cells and can be cell type specific, i.e. a virus can infect only the cells that affect skin and hair follicles. But not just any virus will work, so don't hold your breath for spider COVID to be the hot new variant. The virus needs to be minimally toxic, as you can't make cells produce spider hairs if you murder them first. It also has to be tolerated by the immune system because the cells aren't going to be very useful if the immune system takes them out with ease. It has to infect relevant cells only, i.e. it needs to find the skin and hair follicles without bothering the others. And the virus has to be stable, meaning that once it makes its way into the cell, it has to remain unchanged and stick around for as long as possible. Basically, the way you would act if you finally started getting consistent invites to D&D night at Brad's house. Fucking Brad. But the unexpectedly awesome thing is, we're already pretty close to this being a reality. In fact, the adeno-associated virus, aka AAV, is already FDA approved to treat retinal dystrophy. So just maybe, say goodbye to the days of your friends getting matching whale tattoos without you. AAV is a tiny virus that can't replicate on its own. It instead piggybacks off infections from other viruses, like the ones that cause the common cold. And it's non-immunogenic, which means that it doesn't set your immune response in motion. So if you get bitten by a spider carrying a virus with all the instructions needed to make a cell that will create a spider hair, and the virus then targets the precise cells needed to make hair, then it's possible. But the amount of information that AAV is capable of storing is not huge. It's on the order of about one protein. So probably not enough to know how to make the proteins, when to make the proteins, how to know what to do with the proteins, and how to coordinate with its neighbors to actually make the hair. Because human hair is already an organ that is produced through the cooperation of a bunch of different cells. And in terms of time, it's not going to be a quick transition, as it's going to take a while for enough infected cells to create new skin and hair follicles to replace your boring human skin and hair with enough spider hair to sense that your friends are at happy hour without you, so you can then leap from building to building before they finish their smoky mezcal pineapple margaritas. So at this point, you're not any closer to awkwardly inserting yourself into any social situation that takes place without your inclusion. Now, there is one more way that this could potentially be possible, but sadly, it's going to involve your mom. Don't worry, this isn't an elaborate setup for some archaic yo mama jokes. It's, it's not 1998 after all. But let's say it is 1998, or whatever year that sublimely magical moment of your conception was. And then let's say that instead of a spider biting you, a spider bites your mom with some of this magical virus, and that this virus is then able to cross into the placenta. That's not a euphemism for anything weird, we swear. From there, the virus can infect you, the tiny little mass of cells that is becoming a human, which could potentially then infect all the cells in your developing little body. But this could only work in the case of a not yet born human, i.e. presumably not you, dear viewer of this video. 
So as far as the possibilities we've explored here, you're never gonna have spider hairs all over your body. However, if you or your partner are lucky enough to get bit by a spider with a special virus and also get pregnant, then the next generation of your family line might just be able to climb all the walls and sense all the paralyzing social isolation that you were never able to. And it would happen like this, a virus that we don't yet know about, which may or may not exist, which carries an instruction manual on how, when, and where to make spider hair. It's carried by a spider, which then injects you or your partner while your future brat is a developing embryo. The virus sneaks through the placenta and infects the cells that are going to make up your mini-me's body. Your kid comes out normal at first, but the second puberty hits, boom! Along with all the normal, awkward, and horrifying puberty stuff, your kid is also getting covered in tiny microscopic spider hairs on their hands and feet, which allow them to climb walls with ease, and which might make other parts of puberty pretty weird. So are you getting spidey hairs anytime soon? Sadly, no. But it's absolutely possible that it could happen down the line, even if it's ridiculously unlikely. And in the meantime, if your friends are sneaking around and not inviting you to things, then screw them. You deserve better anyway. No, seriously, you do. Thanks for sticking around for another Science is Hard. And if there are scientific questions you can't stop thinking about, let us know in the comments. Thanks as always to our patrons. Be sure to check out our podcast and we'll catch you next time on Science is Hard.